So good evening and a warm welcome to all the dignitaries present here. I'm Sreyoshi from Clarinet, serving as the allocated session assistant to ensure a seamless experience. Clarinet stands as India's most relied upon digital platform, offering a multitude of enriching services exclusively for doctors. It is with great pride that Clarinet serves as the digital partner for this event hosted by the National Neurology Forum and the focus of today's session is NOEL Neurology Series 18. So let's begin today's session for which I'd like to invite Vijayan and Sir to take over. Over to you, Sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to another session of Popular NOEL program. I am Vijayan Jamalpuri. I am a neonatal pediatrician uh, at Rainbow Children's Hospital, Hyderabad, and with the interest uh, in focus as well as the neonatal cardiology but uh, we have um, expert who does not need any introduction my friend um, who we can call as a neonatal cardiologist and uh, trained across the globe and making huge difference spreading the focus uh, not only India but the other countries as well so welcome Dr. Mohit yeah and then we have a uh, uh, Dr. Sankal, who is a member of Noel Committee, Neonatologist from Doomgaum. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sang Sankal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we have Dr. Shravya, who is a fellow at Andhra Hospitals, Vijayawada. And Dr. Bujata is a Neonatologist at uh, uh, Andhra Hospital. Dr. Bujata will be the moderator. And uh, once, uh, do we want us to stop in between, ask the questions, uh, Dr. Mohit, or... We do in the end, whatever you want. Yeah, in if it is relevant in between, just yeah. to ask so that we can steer the discussion to particular thing, then we will do that. Yeah, I okay. think so. Excellent. Is that okay, Shravya? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. So, okay, good. So now I will uh, hand over to Dr. Bujata uh, to start and uh, yeah, to say a few words and start. Yeah. Good evening, one and all. Uh, myself, Dr. Bujata, consultant neonatologist uh, working at Andhra Hospitals, Vijayawada. Uh, we'll straight away go to the presentation. I request uh, Dr. Shravya to start the, the case. Okay. Uh, so, good evening, everybody. Uh, myself, Dr. Shravya, uh, doing fellowship in neonatology at Andhra Hospitals, Vijayawada. And my moderator is Dr. Bujata, madam, who is a consultant neonatologist at Andhra Hospitals. Today, I'm going to present a case uh, of a neonate who is in shock. So we'll start with the presentation. Um, so coming to uh, case presentation, first antenatal history, uh, which is uh, given by the grandmother. So a 27 year old primary mother uh, who uh, with third degree consanguinity marriage, she was an unbooked case. Uh, with the antenatal history of uh, gestational diabetes from fifth month of pregnancy uh, was on oral hypoglycemic drugs with poor control. And uh, there were no other systemic illness which were complicating the pregnancy. The gestational age was 32 weeks and the mother's blood group is A positive. So uh, mother received only two doses of uh, dexamethasone uh, in anticipation of the preterm delivery, uh, which is the uh, information given by the referral doctor. And uh, baby was born by vaginal delivery at 32 weeks of gestational age. Baby cried immediately after birth. Upgirds were not known. And the birth weight uh, was 1.7 kgs and a male newborn. So baby uh, perinatal history, baby cried immediately after birth, but uh, baby had increased work of breathing since birth and was shifted to NACU and baby was started on bubble CPAP uh, with FIO2 of 40% and PEEP of 6. And uh, X-ray was done, which was suggestive of hyaline membrane disease uh, as a result of which surfactant was administered at 24 hours of life. And uh, baby continued to have distress in spite of uh, being surfactant instead of giving surfactant on CPAP. So baby was intubated at 40 hours of life. And uh, echo was done at outside hospital which showed severe pH and the baby was started on sildenafil. So as per the referral doctor, baby was having hypotension at around 48 hours of life and was started on dopamine and was referred to our hospital for further management. So uh, Dr. Shravya, Yes, sir. 
few things i just wanted to clarify and ask so this uh, baby got admitted with you after like was not initially treated at your hospital was referred to your hospital is it so yes sir yes sir okay so at what like what time like at what hours of life the baby was shifted to you at around 80 hours of life the baby was shifted to our hospital so more than like around on day 4th of life yes sir Okay, fine. So, few things like one is the mother is diabetic. So, this is baby of a diabetic mother. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so, the chances of RDS and shock are they more in the baby of diabetic mother compared to babies with non-diabetic mother? Yes, sir. The chances of RDS are more in the babies who are born to a diabetic mother. Why? Because there will be secondary surfactant deficiency, sir. Okay, good. Then, are there any chances of going these babies going into shock more as compared to, or the risk of having shock or a, any hypotension is more in these babies as compared to the. Babies which are born to the normal mother, non-diabetic mother. Yes, sir. Uh, because the baby can have uh, the complications of IDM like polycythemia and all, we can be there. Uh, hypoglycemia, so the baby can land up in shock, sir. Okay. And the baby can also have cardiac problems. Okay, which is the most common cardiac problem uh, for babies uh, born in, uh, born to diabetic mother? Um, sir, um, uh, endocardial cushion defects, sir. Uh, AVSD, sir. Atrioventricular septal defects. Okay. And VSD, VSD is sir. more common VSD. disease. VSD, sir. VSD. Yeah. Uh, yeah, VSD is one, yes. Uh, Anything else? Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, sir. Yeah. Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but non obstructive one. Uh, it is not the one. Yes. yes okay. Good. And one thing I could see in your slides is excess suggestive hyaline membrane disease and surfactant was ad administered at 24 hours of life. Yes. Sir. Does it look uh, like, I know this is not treated at your hospital, mm -hmm. but if you see this, does this look normal or it is, it seems to be, you know, off track? Whether yes, this sir. has to be, this is to be done like this or you would have changed the way or timing of surfactant to be given to this baby? Sir, definitely, I would have given as early as possible after birth, sir, that at least within six hours of life, sir. Okay. Good. Dr. Vijay. Yeah. So, uh, you said endocardial cushion defects. Uh, which, which condition uh, has uh, this condition specific to? It can happen in any any baby, but uh, any uh, chromosomal condition where is more prevalent? Down syndrome, sir. Okay, trisomy 21. No? ABS. Yes, trisomy 21, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, with regard to the questions are asked, so you, you said uh, you want to give surfactant early. How mm -hmm. early? What is the criteria of uh, the most recent uh, um, European consensus guideline of surfactant therapy? Sir, it is uh, like as it is a preterm baby, uh, very preterm baby. So early surfactant is uh, also advisable. That is, the surfactant can be given at a delivery room also, or immediately after the baby is getting shifted to NICU. Sir. Early rescue surfactant. No delivery room surfactant. Uh, mm -hmm. no in the in the in the era of delivery room CPAP is no more recommended, uh, unless unless baby is ventilated and hypoxic in spite of the best efforts and even then it is discouraged but um, what is early rescue surfactant you are right the earlier you do the better yes sir mm. okay mm. within within two okay. hours okay no, within three oh, yes sir so, okay fine so that's what sir was trying to mm. refer to because the time in a, a stitch in time saves nine okay mm. So yeah, we'll 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 let you continue, Doctor uh, Doctor Bujata or Doctor Sankal want to ask anything at this point? 
I think we are good, sir. Uh, let's continue, sir. Yeah, excellent. just one that uh, she said that uh, IDM babies are at risk of secondary surfactant deficiency, ah. <laughs> uh, mainly primary deficiency, which is exaggerated. Secondary deficiency is when it's secondary to some disease like meconium aspiration or pneumonia. Yeah. So it's not secondary right. deficiency. Yeah. We can continue, sir. Okay. So you got, you heard that, uh, Shravya? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, keep going. Yes. Uh, so, uh, a baby was retrieved to our hospital at around 80 hours of life and the retrieval uh, transport was uneventful. So, further evaluation was done. So, at this current point of time, my diagnosis is this is a preterm baby of 32-week gestational age with around 1.7 kg of birth weight with respiratory distress syndrome, with shock and with moderate PAH. Uh, Dr. Srivata. Uh, Shravya, Shravya. Shravya, Shravya, sorry. Shravya. Yeah, so just regarding the shock, I know this baby has been managed. So what will be your differentials? at Like this baby went into shock at 48 hours. So what will be your differential, clinical differential diagnosis, why this baby is going into shock? Um, uh, the first thing is... Um... It can be uh, because of the early onset sepsis, because uh, we don't know the book, book uh, because the mother is unbooked case, uh, because of the early onset sepsis or because of secondary to uh, IDM baby, sir. Okay. And, uh, secondary to any, uh, as the um, baby is a preterm baby, uh, can be any myocardial depression. Mm hmm And uh, secondary to PAH, sir. And uh, okay. uh, uh, because the baby was, was also started on sildenafil, so it can be due to that also hypotension. So your differentials will be, this is maybe the shock, maybe because secondary to sepsis. Yes. Sir. Or because of the uh, PEH, pulmonary hypertension. Yes. Maybe per se because, because of some cardiac issues as the baby is uh, born to diabetic mother. Yes. Okay. Yes. Anything else? This baby is ventilated, isn't it? Ah, yes. Given certain yes. baby is ventilated. Yes. Anything else which commonly which can happen commonly to babies who are po on positive pressure ventilation? Because of the PDA, sir. PDA. Okay. Preterm baby PDA. Yeah. But if the baby is on uh, positive pressure ventilation. And can then we get any be... obstructive uh, type of shock, sir? Uh, obstructive is basically, obs mm -hmm. obstructive shock is basically the anatomical anomaly, isn't it? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. But I'm asking if the baby is on positive pressure ventilation and they goes into shock like poor perfusion and all these things, what we should rule out? I don't know. Do we have the provision that uh, the participants who are attending they can uh, write down their this thing on, in the chat box and we can see what they're writing? Is it possible, Doctor Vijay? Uh, I I don't know the the she can uh, clarify the clearnet people because actually the, uh, it can happen because we clearnet um, platform only we use for the Gujarat NNF uh, this thing yeah, um, our uh, online okay. teachings. Shreyasi, can they interact? Can they pu put uh, answer in the chat box? Shreyasi, are you there? Mm -hmm. I think they can. I think. Yeah, they... I think so. They should. They because they, we you do this in um, Gujarat and NF activities. We do that. Okay, it's I'll fine. Just post the, I'll, I'll post uh, in the chat. Dear all, um, answer your yeah. Post your answers. Your... Yeah, this is, but we can do that because we are having the faculty this thing. Yeah, yeah. The other people. Yeah. Uh, other than those two. Shreyasi, are you there? But they have a separate yes, link, sir. sir. Yes, they have a separate link. Hello. Yeah. Can they post the answer in the chat box? Yes, yes. Uh, I will post the answer. Yeah, actually. Okay. Great. Okay. Dr. Uh, Shravya. Yes, sir. This can is what I was asking. Uh, pneumothorax, sir. Uh, yes. So you have to rule out the dope. 
so you have to rule out the pneumothorax or high intrathoracic pressures because if you are given surfactant and the baby's compliance has increased and your intrathoracic pressure goes up with that much of pressure so that may cause the shock isn't it so now now your differentials before you have received this baby is one is sepsis secondary to some uh, yeah pda is there somebody has written the pda good okay and then um, uh, 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 this thing um, uh, because secondary because the baby per se has born to a diabetic mother and your pulmonary hypertension and you have told because of hypoxia there can be a myocardial dysfunction okay fine um, dr vijay um, um, no i think uh, good she can go ahead yeah so unless uh, sankalp or dr bujata wants to ask yes please no sir shavya please proceed yes sir yes ma'am uh, so on admission uh, system wise so respiratory uh, baby was uh, uh, connected to mechanical ventilator with the mode of samv plus uh, pressure support with the fio2 of requiring high fio2 like 80% with pip of 20 and pip of 6 with that the saturations were around 95% uh, air entry was equal bilaterally and the baby had spontaneous efforts Uh, coming to cardiovascular, a baby was having tachycardia with a heart rate of 185 beats per minute, uh, with the capillary refilling time of around three seconds, and with the BP, blood pressure was 42 by 26 with mean of uh, 30, and heart sounds were heard with no audible murmur, and the peripheral pulses were normal volume, and uh, urine output was present. Uh, coming to CNS, uh, the tone, activity, and the reflexes were good. Uh, and uh, metabolic grbs was around 100 mg per deciliter and the baby was eudermic and warmer and uh, uh, per abdomen it was soft there was no organomegaly with uh, altered ng aspirates uh, can you can you go to the previous slides please sorry yeah yes. so uh, just regarding the blood pressures are these blood pressures normal for the baby because this baby you were telling uh, was having shock history of shock was on indro so uh, can you can you read this uh, give the you know assessment of this blood pressures for this baby uh, yes sir the blood pressure is uh, low sir generally we consider um, Uh, the map of around uh, um, around to gestation late sir but uh, then also it should be minimum of uh, 30 the diastole is very low sir 26 yeah so okay, is it uh, what is the ideal way of assessing the blood pressure for any gestation so there, there is a notion that we do that the mean blood pressures are equivalent to gestational uh, equal to yes. gestational age but that is not the correct way of doing it um is there a, like if i want to assess this blood pressure for this particular baby at 32 weeks what sh how i should uh, compare that what should be the normal values at this age and gestation how we assess that with the normogram we... sir excellent excellent good so there uh, the normograms we see which like do we see systolic diastolic mean separately or combine like how we do that how we assess that uh, systolic diastolic mean percentile sir uh, like 50th percentile like 95th uh, all together we'll see sir according to the gestation so age so did you did you check the on the normograms did you check the values for 32 weeker on day 4th of life what is the 50th percentile for systolic diastolic and mean in this baby uh, yes, it was around uh, 60 by 40 sir and with uh, around the mean pressure of a uh, map of around 40 sir for at 32 weeks at uh, of 50, 50th percentile okay good what else you are getting from this blood pressure systolic 42 diastolic 26 white pulse pressures are also there sir so what does it tell white pulse pressure is there so what is what it is what it is indicated of indicative of the uh, baby is having the um, uh, there can be uh, it can be secondary to distributive shock sir because mm -hmm. of the capillary leak or the baby can have pda uh, white pulse yes. pressure uh, so these are the differentials sir distributive shock secondary to sepsis yeah Separate. good 
So in the chat, by in the chat, I could see people have been asking what are the charts they follow, and somebody has written Zubio charts. Yes, they are the percentile charts. You can follow that. Great. Um, Dr. Yeah. Sankar, Dr. Vijay, Dr. Bujata, want to ask anything? I think uh, just one question, sir, from my side. Uh, so the FIR2 requirement has increased to 80%. What will be your thought process? And uh, would you consider a repeat dose of surfactant at this point? No, sir. Generally, it has, as the baby is around a day four of life, uh, there is no that much uh, uh, use of uh, secondary surfactants, sir. We need to evaluate for other causes, sir. Okay. Yes, I think the baby is... Uh... Can something help you, Shravya, in deciding that? Madam? Can something help you in deciding what exactly is the need for FIO2? Any investigation or anything uh, which you can do and tell that the baby has RDS, still has features of RDS or something else? We can uh, repeat a chest x-ray, we can go for ultrasound lung and we can do functional echo, madam. Yes. Okay, I think Dr. Shavya, go ahead. Okay. So on admission, in view of high FIO2 requirement, uh, we, we have ruled out dope. And uh, as the BP was on lower side, so we have given normal saline bolus. Uh, and reassessed, and we uh, ordered for chest X-ray, ultrasound, lung, and neurosonogram, and functional echo was planned. So, and uh, blood reports at the time of admission, uh, HP was fifteen point six with total total counts of fourteen thousand, uh, with no uh, neutrophil predominance, with platelets of around one point five lakhs, borderline thrombocytopenia with CRP, elevated CRP, which is 22.7, and with the normal renal function and liver function test, uh, metabolic uh, coming to electrolytes, uh, serum ionized calcium was on lower side, so we have given for correction for that. And we have done uh, ABG, uh, which showed metabolic acidosis with uh, lactate uh, elevation of around 9.6. So, in the Dr. Srovia, in the ABG, is it only the metabolic acidosis or something else is also there? With, the respirat with the respiratory acidosis also there, sir. PCO2 yeah. 59. So, and CO2 is also not being as per the, you know, what the compensation would have occurred. So, that shows there is some respiratory issue also. Yes, sir. So, so somebody in the sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Mohit. No, and somebody in the chat box is asking the criteria for the white pulse pressure. So that is, Dr. Sravya, can you uh, uh, tell that? The more than what, 20, what is when we say it is white pulse pressure? Uh, more than twenty-five difference, we can say it as uh, white pulse pressure, sir. Difference mm. between the systolic and diastolic. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, okay. Let's see if anybody has written in the chat box. Okay. So the thing is, it is 15 to 20. Okay. Some of the uh, some of the database says it is 15. Some says it is 20. Systole and diastole difference. Okay. okay. Dr. Sankal, you were asking something. So, Sorry. Just, uh, I was asking that uh, what should be our ventilation strategy now, Dr. Stavia, that the baby is on 80% FiO2, there is CO2 building up, right? And we have ruled out dope. And we are on SIMV mode of ventilation. So how would you change your ventilation now? Uh, we can change to uh, uh, PRVC mode, sir. But as our unit, uh, we are well versed with SIMV. Uh, so we would like to uh, sedate the baby and uh, uh, continue SAMV mode of ventilation. Okay. So in general, uh, we one would consider HFO at this point as a rescue mode of ventilation. But if your unit does not have facility, you can continue SAMV mode of ventilation, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are continuing SAMV mode of ventilation, uh, what changes in settings will you make? 
because of CO2 being building up and FR2 requirement going high. Do we have an X-ray also? Uh, yes, sir, we have an X-ray, sir. Yeah. You can show the X-ray and discuss. Yeah. So this is the X-ray, sir, at admission, uh, which is showing uh, uh, still RDS features. And we have done ultrasound lung also, sir, uh, which has shown a uh, shred sign, uh, which is suggestive of uh, pneumonia. There is a subpleural consolidation with a disruption of the uh, pleura. So, which is the classic uh, feature of pneumonia. So, we are yeah. sorry, asking how okay. can we the, make the changes? Okay, so... Mm. So, would you, how would you change your ventilation now? Now that you know that there is no pneumothorax, there is uh, pneumonia, and based on the X-ray, would you make any changes in your PIP, PWEP rate? I would increase the rate, sir, to physiological rate. First, I will sedate the baby, and I would uh, make the rate to physiological rate and uh, increase the PEP, sir, so to open up the collapsed uh, consolidated lung. Uh, and then PIP, sir. Okay, so yes, we will uh, increase the PWP and we will see how much uh, volume is being delivered at our yes. PIP. And right, yes. and we'll uh, how much tidal volume is being delivered and try to uh, increase the mean airway pressure and as well as optimize the ventilation for CO2 washout, right? Yes. Both ventilation and oxygenation are at compromise, right? So we'll increase the mean airway pressure to improve oxygenation and we'll improve the ventilation by optimizing the tidal volume and rate to improve the ventilation. Right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is, uh, so, this is for uh, the candidates who have been attending this. This is a good picture for shred sign in lung ultrasound. So all this is for the learning process. And can, Dr. Strobia, can you show the X-ray? The X-ray? This is the X-ray, sir. Yeah, so this is, one is, if you want to rule out RDS, the, what you see, RDS is a oh, homogeneous or non-homogeneous disease. I'm going to go to that. So in this X-ray, the whiteness, yeah, yeah, the pathology is homogeneous or non-homogeneous? It is non-homogeneous, sir. Yeah, so that rules out your RDS. RDS is a homogeneous. Then you look for the rib, rib spaces. Okay, is it low volume or normal volume? Normal volume, sir. Yeah, so that rules out. And your uh, the good thing is, on X-ray, are you getting the doubt for uh, pneumonia? Yes, sir. We are getting. Yes, sir. There is. Yeah, and that has been confirmed by your ultrasound. ultrasound. Yes, yes. This is just for learning for. Uh, for the candidates. Sorry, I, somebody was speaking. Somebody, somebody was asking somebody. I, I thought I just started no, that's, talking. That's, okay. that's a very important point, uh, Mohit. Thank you because we are increasingly using the bedside ultrasound, and uh, because X-ray might not be set up for available. And uh, yeah, so Shavi, I just want to ask one thing. So you said I heard you saying PRVC can be used. So, can you elaborate what do you mean by PRVC? Because, uh, sir, what is PRVC? Can you elaborate? Hello, sir. Can you elaborate what is PRVC? Sir, it is uh, uh, pressure regulated volume control mode, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Do we use that in newborns? Mm -hmm. Well, if we we don't, that is mainly used in the pediatric patients. Uh, it's we use volume guarantee or volume targeted ventilation, which is different from PRVC. It is close, yeah. but it's not quite. And because in view of time, because the topic on this uh, week is different, I would not go into details. But you can, as a homework, you guys can go back and see what is the difference between VG and PRVC. Why? Volume guarantee is an add-on to the SIMV or SIPP ventilation we do. Go ahead and have a, have a look. Yeah. So I'll stop it there. You Back to you, Shavya. Uh, 
so we have done 2d echo which showed a uh, moderate ph with rvsp of around 46 mm of mercury and uh, there was large pda 3.2 mm with bidirectional shunt and uh, small ast with bidirectional shunt and cardiac output of around 500 ml per kg per minute uh, with normal cardiac function uh, with uh, uh, and NSG was also done, which was uh, normal. Okay. Sorry, I would like to stop you here. So one thing is, there is a moderate pulmonary hypertension with uh, uh, 46 is the right side of TRJ at estimated pressures. Fine. Yes. So there is a large PDA, isn't it? Yes. With bi-direction shunting. So here, uh, the first thing I would like to know, like if it is bi-direction shunting, how much is left to right, how much is it right to left? Because that will, one, quantify my pulmonary hypertension, yeah. and two, it will tell me whether it is a significant left to right shunting is going on or not. I don't know if that has been done, because that is something which is important, because here, with functional echo, we have to quantify, classify two, two issues. One, what, how much is the severity of PPHN, pulmonary hypertension, and how much significant is the hemodynamically, say, whether this PDA is HSPD or not. So whatever findings you have uh, written here, so if I talk about PDA, as per the size and the cardiac output, where you will place this PDA? Whether it is uh, hemodynamic significant or not? Uh, no, sir. It's not hemodynamically significant PDA, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Like how you tell that? Uh, sir, there should be any systemic uh, hyperperfusion should be there, sir. Either uh, there should be reduced blood flow to the uh, brain or to the um, renal or, uh, uh, or to the bubble, sir. So, okay. there is so one no, part of uh, the HSPDA is systemic is hypoperfusion. No hypoperfusion yes, sir. And what is the other part? Uh, to increase pulmonary over-circulation, sir. Yeah, pulmonary over-circulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are the components, like how the clinical components and echo components that define whether this is HSPDA. Okay? Yes, sir. So... If I see, I'm seeing the size of 3.2. By size, where you will classify this PDA, small, medium, or large? Large, large PDA, sir. Okay, so, so less the, how you classify? Like, can you tell? Depending on the size? Uh, depending on the size, sir. Uh, if it is less than 1.5 mm, we call it a small PDA, sir. Uh, yes. 1.5 to around 2 mm, we call it as medium, and more than 2, large, sir. Yeah, less than 1.5, 1.5 to 3, and more than 3. Uh, more than 3. Okay, so, okay. so this is large. And yes. then your cardiac output is 500 ml per kg per minute. Uh, yes, what is sir. the normal range? Um, sir, it is so it is 130 to 310. Okay. Uh, yes. 300 to 400 means moderately large duct and more than 400 ml per kg per minute means it is large duct. Large, high cardiac output. High cardiac output. Yes. So these two things are telling you are the features of large duct. Okay. Yes. So actually, um, in ECHO, we should further do further, like basically there are 20 components, parameters. But at least we should do 11, 10 to 11 components for this where to classify and see whether it is HSPD or not. Because just by the size and your cardiac output, it looks like this is a large PDA. It can be hemodynamic significant. Yeah. Can you tell me the other components which are any, any you do have any idea what are the other components on ECHO which tells me regarding features of HSPD? Um, one is uh, pH, sir. What did you say? Okay. pH? Sir? One is pulmonary over-circulation, sir. Yeah, so, so what are the that, features what of pulmonary over-circulation? Madam? For that pulmonary over-circulation, what are the parameters you regularly see? 
uh, in four chamber view uh, we see for the trj and uh, we calculate the rvsp and uh, we no, see no 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 that is for pphl we are asking for pda pda, PDA. Uh, sir we see for uh, la to iota ratio sir la to ratio yes um if generally if it is uh, the ratio should be like 1.4 is to 1 uh, if, uh, if it is less than 1.4 is to 1 it is a small sir based on the la to iota ratio we grade the pda sir Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, based on the uh, descending iota uh, diastolic flow also uh, we can grade the pda sir in echo findings okay okay and Fine. ductal velocity v max and all oh. we should see sir find yeah. so the best way to remember uh, shravya about pd assessment is so you want to know all the uh, echocardiographic findings of about the pda and the impact of the pda in the heart and impact of the pda on other circulation and organs that's how i would remember so i i think uh, moisa already nicely uh, told you this is how i try to remember so that i don't miss out any things and and bear in mind the always high pulmonary pressure does not necessarily always due to pulmonary vascular resistance it could be over the, the volume driven pulmonary pressure also if you have more flow it can also give more pressure and uh, dr mohit can comment here yeah because uh, over the time if you keep on getting this like uh, cardiac output high is because of pulmonary over circulation that's why you get volume overload of the left side and you keep on getting keep on uh, shunting blood from left to right and over circulation that will lead to pulmonary congestion and hence your pulmonary pressures will also uh, oh. end up in rising up going up totally so yeah. that's why uh, two things are very important in this baby one the direction of the like if it is bidirectional then how much part is left to right and how much it is right to left if my right to left component is less than 30% of the total cycle then that clearly tells me that it is predominantly left to right shunting because of the duct and if my right to left component is between 30 to 70% of the total cycle that means my right sided pressures are significantly high so then in that case if i want to take the decision of closing the pda i would not close the pda if my right to left shunting is more than 30% of the cycle agree so that is one thing we we should be uh, seeing in this baby that is very important and then i have to see the other components also of pda and pph because by seeing this pda is large 3.2 and the cardiac output is pretty high because if my right sided pressures are high then my cardiac output will be restricted because my left to right shunting will be restricted absolutely i think a beautifully explained by dr mohit so in fact if you have um, so more than 30% of right to left shunt trying to close this duct can be detrimental to the baby so it but here i think it is a flow related pressure rather than a vascular resistance yeah shall we so move? just to throw light on this it was um, more than 30 percentage of the cardiac cycle so more of right to left okay, shunt okay 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 so so you need to be cautious then yeah mohit we can go ahead yes please ah uh, if um, doctor uh, uh, this thing uh, ियाल Uh, so these are the echo views uh, which is showing uh, um, asd which is showing bidirectional shunt um, and uh, this is the echo view of the pda sorry uh, sorry dr shravya can you go back to the yes in this what are the, what are the other findings in this it it they are matching with your history yeah um there is um hypertrophy of the uh, interventricular yes. septum yes interventricular septum even for the rv wall 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there is even like the, we have to take the size and then put it on the Z score. But to just to have a see, just to have eyeball eyeballing, mm-hmm. just to seeing it, you can give a comment that the interventricular septum and RV is is a bit hypertrophic. It is thicker than the normal, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And that goes with your uh, history also. Yes. This is just for the learning for other uh, people who are attending. Good. Nice views. Okay. Shabhya, a widow would have been more uh, uh, better. TK, no problem. You got to start okay. the images, no problem. Okay, sir. Go ahead. And uh, this is the view of uh, PDA, which is showing uh, bidirectional shunt, but predominantly uh, right to left shunt. This is the PDA, which is a right large PDA. Sir? Right to left or left to right, predominantly? What uh, is this image right. showing, Shavya? This image. Left to right, sir. This image is showing left to right, sir. More ah. of left to right. <laughs> Red jet left to right. Yeah, you got the Doppler as well. You already showed, yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, this is the uh, RVSP, sir, measuring around 42. So we got around 46, sir. Okay. So these are the eco views. And... Uh, uh, so next, after doing the basic investigations, we started uh, the baby on IV antibiotics after sending blood culture as per the unit protocol uh, because we were suspecting pneumonia and the platelets were borderline and the CRP was elevated. And we have secured uh, umbilical uh, arterial lines, UAC and UVC. And uh, we optimized the lung recruitment by optimizing the PEEP and all. And uh, the hemodynamics were reassessed. Uh, so this is the X-ray after securing the umbilical uh, arterial and uh, vein uh, UAC and UVC. Uh, so now at this point of time, uh, so my diagnosis is a preterm baby of 32 weeks of gestational age with 1.7 kgs uh, with the respiratory distress syndrome, uh, secondary to uh, pneumonia, which is an, uh, like early onset sepsis with shock, with high cardiac output, with moderate TAH and with large PDA. So we have, uh, as we were suspecting uh, a shock secondary to sepsis uh, with high cardiac output. So we have started a noradrenaline, which was started at around uh, 0.1 micrograms per kg per minute. So we have kept a target of 50. Uh, then after uh, uh, six to eight hours uh, with the uh, norad of support 0.4 mics, the BP was stabilized, but still there was tachycardia of heart rate around 180. And uh, with the CFT of three seconds, and the pulse volume was still bounding, and uh, there was you uh, know normal urine output. Again, we have done arterial blood gas, which was uh, still showing uh, metabolic acidosis with the respiratory acidosis and the with lactate of around nine point six. So there was persistent uh, metabolic acidosis with elevated lactate. This is something very interesting because, yeah, uh, because uh, in this, the, if this is high output septic shock, norad is the drug of choice, and then the ca- high cardiac output can be because of what are what can be the other cause for high output cardiac sh- uh, this thing in this baby, Doctor Shravya. Uh, because of the uh, PDA, sir. PDA. So if if it is because of the PDA, then what what was your plan of action? Whether NORAD would have helped or deteriorated the condition? It will help, sir, because it will decrease the pulmonary arterial hypertension also. No, because if it is because of large PDA, you are getting the baby with shock, systemic hyperperfusion. So in that case scenario, if you start NORAD, will will it be detrimental? Like it will be bad or good? Sir, good only, sir. Okay. So I would like other people to comment in the chat box. Uh, Because, see, all the issues in the large PDA, what happens is left to right shunting is happening. Okay. And if I start NORAD, 
what it will do it will increase your systemic pressures so ductal stealing ductal shunting is already happening if you increase the systemic pressures what will happen to ductal steel well it will increase or decrease shavya yeah. what will yeah. happen to ductal shunt if you increase the systemic vascular resistance that's what sir is asking it will be more sir yeah good then so it will it will further increase your systemic hypoperfusion isn't it ah uh, yes sir so, so more amount yeah. of shunt will be towards lungs pulmonary overcirculation so systemic hypo yes so in that case your norad will be bad for the baby but if it is septic sepsis high output shock it is then it will be good so that's why we were discussing that it will be very important to assess and uh, dr bujata already told significantly it was right to left shunting right to left so shunting. that yeah so that clearly tells and that pulmonary hypertension is a part of septic shock many papers have been published on that that the pulmonary pressures increases when the baby goes into the septic shock so that that may be the feature and this is all those things are telling you that so that's why your norad if you started that is appropriate uh, i would like uh, we would like the other people to also comment and ask questions on this because this is something which in which your functional echo will be very helpful in deciding the inotropes yeah. so i absolutely agree with uh, dr mohit uh, see ultimately what do i want to achieve so on that note i'll ask uh, shavya what is shock what is circulatory shock shavya what are the three impo important components of circulatory shock what is what is shock by the way Sir? very quickly we don't have uh, much time uh -huh. we have 10 minutes so uh, there will be inability of uh, uh, tissue oxygen delivery sir because okay. of the hyperperfusion excellent so it's a it's a clinical pathological syndrome where circulatory dysfunction happens for whatever the reason leading to reduced oxygen and also nutrient delivery to the tissues and our aim of treatment to improve that our aim is not to increase the blood pressure blood pressure is taken as the proxy for circulatory shock often it is not it is one of the parameters is here so once we know what we want then we can get it right so as dr mohit nicely explained why this is happening how can i get over so if the pda is causing the problem giving a vasoconstrictor further worsen the worsen the thing so we need to understand what do i why this is happening what do i want to achieve ultimately we want to achieve a tissue perfusion so not high blood pressures okay so that's why it's very important to understand and i totally uh, agree with dr mohit so i stop it there and i let dr bujata and dr sankal to comment or uh, ask anything shavya why do you think there is still a reason to raised lactate Because Can you think of any matter. differentials? Because of the shock, sepsis. Okay. Uh, so lactate indicates what? That is another component of shock. Yes, right. tissue hyperperfusion, which is leading to anaerobic metabolism. Right. So that can be shock and the sepsis. Okay. I think uh, we have discussed shock and inotropes in detail. I would just like to uh, uh, take the discussion to another aspect, which is ventilation. Dr. Shravya, uh, PO2 of this baby in arterial uh, ABG is 24.8. And the baby also has metabolic acidosis, increased lactate. Uh, what is your interpretation and how do you, uh, what, what are your comments on this and how would you like to improve it? Sir, uh, we can calculate the OA, sir, oxygenation index, and... Uh... Good. So, how much was the OI for this baby? Hmm. Sir, it was uh, high, sir, actually. Uh, so, around okay. uh, uh, 15, sir, around 15 to... How do you calculate OI? 
How do you calculate what is the formula? For oxygenation index, sir. So yeah, generally yeah. we calculate, okay. sir. Uh, generally we calculate it uh, MAP into FAO2 divided by uh, uh, PAO2, sir. Okay. So for this baby, it was close to 15. Ah uh, yes. Would sir. you consider giving uh, inhaled nitric oxide at this point? Uh, actually, uh, it was uh, written uh, uh, wrong, sir. Actually. So, we have done uh, suction and then uh, later we have repeated the gas and it was normalized, sir. But it with this normalized. value, if OA is high, we can consider nitric oxide, sir. Okay. What is the traditional cutoff for uh, giving inhaled nitric oxide? Sir, uh, it is it's more than of 20. Hmm. 20, sir. Hmm. OI of 20 and uh, the baby has uh, uh, shock and pH on eco. Mm -hmm. So I think if the OI is 20 and if despite suctioning and everything, PO2 still stays low and we have optimized our ventilation. In your case, I think uh, ventilation and oxygenation, the you know pressures need to be optimized more. One can consider HFO mode of ventilation. So if all of that has been done and still the OI is uh, 20 or more, one should consider INO for this baby. INO, yes. And as far as inotropes is concerned, uh, when would you practically consider giving steroids to such a baby, IV steroids, uh, for shock? Sir, when do, uh, steroids, sir? Yeah, hydrocortisone for shock. Uh, when there is uh, a refractory uh, uh, shock, which is not responding to inotropes, or fluid boluses. Okay, so how do you define catecholamine refractory shock? Mm -hmm. I think uh, whenever the NORAD or ADRI requirement is 0.3 or more, that Point is uh, mm -hmm. uh, called catecholamine refractory shock. Or, or if the baby is on dopa dobuta, 10 or more is mm -hmm. considered catecholamine refractory shock. And then you should consider Hydrocortisone yeah. for such babies. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, recently, the CPG guidelines of the shock were published in that now it is as early as possible, especially in the preterms and the babies with the PPHL. You should consider giving steroids as early as possible, even with the first, even with single, when you're starting inotropes, you can start with the steroid and the outcomes are better as compared, compared to when you give later on. So, so this is in the, in the CPG guidelines. It has been now published. Just now we have published that. Excellent. That is something uh, which is beneficial now. Shravya, uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Mohit. And uh, uh, since we talked about the steroids, how does the steroids help for the hypotension? How does it help? Um, so generally, it causes uh, uh, inhibition of the catecholamine metabolism, sir. And it also increases the intracellular calcium and it has a mineralocorticoid effect. So it increases the sensitivity of the catecholamines. Okay, Catecholamine. fine. Okay, fine. Go ahead. And just one more comment, sir. Uh, this addition of steroid is more important for uh, preterm babies and all the more important, as sir said, for extreme preterm babies. Excellent. Because oh, yeah. they don't have uh, adrenal reserves, right? Totally agree. Go ahead, Dr. Shavya. Yes, Go ahead, Amma. Okay. So this is the blood gas, which I have already uh, uh, said that uh, it is showing metabolic acidosis with elevated lactate. This, so, this you can rush through, Shavya. Okay, ma'am. So uh, day five, uh, uh, so the course of the uh, baby. So the problem with, uh, there were problems with high lactate and tachycardia, and uh, there were problems with weaning inotrope and FAO2 further. Arterial uh, blood pressure was 62 by 35 and the urine output was 1 ml per kg per hour uh, with noradrenaline support, with higher noradrenaline support. And uh, we have done a repeat functional echo which still showed moderate PAH with IVC collapsed. So uh, we have repeated fluid bolus and uh, the baby was also having anasarca uh, because of the secondary to possible uh, capillary leak. So we have uh, given uh, one uh, unit of 20% uh, albumin transfusion. And we have repeated blood uh, arterial blood gas, uh, which showed uh, um, uh, there is decrease in the lactate of uh, 
uh, from uh, around the 9 to 6 and the urine output also improved. So this is the course of illness of baby on day 5. Okay. Keep going, Next. sir. Ah, yes, sir. On day six, the baby was stable on ventilator. We could wean the FiO2 from 80, 80 to 60 percent and we could able to mean, wean the pressures. And But still, the inotropic requirement still persisted and uh, baby had feed intolerance with the NG aspects of more than 20 percent. And as there was difficulty in weaning inotrope, so we have repeated functional echo, which uh, uh, showed a PDA size of 2.5 mm with bidirectional shunt with normal cardiac function with moderate to severe pH. So we have considered uh, to start uh, vasopressin along with hydrocortisone steroid. So on day seven of life, uh, the baby was stabilized, stabilized and uh, baby tolerated inotrop weaning and the blood gas uh, came to be normal. So we have uh, started weaning noradrenaline, uh, which was weaned and stopped over the next 24 hours and then vasopressin and hard hydrocortisone, which was weaned and stopped later by day eight. So further quotes, uh, the blood culture came positive for Escintobacter. So we have changed the antibiotics as per the sensitive pattern of the organism and we could able to wean uh, baby from ventilator on day 8 of life and the baby was extubated onto bubble CPAP. Ultrasound lung repeated which showed normal A lines with occasional B lines but there was still persistent oxygen requirement so we have again repeated functional echo uh, which still showed moderate pH with PD of size uh, 1.8 mm with normal cardiac function. So we have started on uh, vasodilator which is uh, we have started on IV sildenafil. And feeds were restarted on day 8 of life and slowly reached full feeds by day 12 of life. So we have given sensitive antibiotics because there was culture positive uh, sepsis so for a total 14 days. And we have done CSF analysis which came to be normal. And baby was on to rumor by day 10 of life. Uh, repeat functional echo showed mild PAH and PDA of 1.5 with left to right shunt predominantly. And baby was stable by day 14 of life and uh, breastfeeds and KMC were started from day 14 of life. And uh, we have discharged the baby uh, once the weight gain was established by day 20 of life. Discharge weight was around 1.8 kgs and echo at the time of discharge showed mild pH and the PDA was closed and small PFO with the left to right shunt. Great. Uh, Dr. Shruva, this is good. So one thing which I wanted to bring, you brought in and you started this baby on vasopressin. Yes, sir. So can you tell me like what are the what were the particular features in which your vasopressin was more helpful in this baby as compared to NORAD? Because yes. if this is not something which is going with the echo finding and the history of the baby, then NORAD and vasopressin, now the, there are studies and data which proves will have this almost the similar effect on pulmonary vasodilatation. So in PPH and both can be used now. But yes. there is one particular thing in which the vasopressin is, in this baby, we would have preferred vasopressin as compared to NORAD. What is that and why? Um, baby was having a vasodilatory shock, sir, which was non-responsive to fluid boluses and vaso, uh, inotropes. And as the um, baby was not having any cardiogenic shock uh, with severe pH, we, we preferred a vasopressin, sir. So now, and uh, like, what is the mechanism of action? What is the action of NORAD and vasopressin? Is it the same or different physiological action of NORAD and vasopressin? Um, NORAD, it is mainly having action on alpha 1 and alpha 2, sir. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a vasopressor? Sir? Basic, basically, it is a vasopressor? Um, vasopressive uh, yes, action, isn't it? And yes, vasopressin sir, is also? Yes, sir. And it, is the system is, it is also vasopressor, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. But it doesn't have any inotropic effect. Yes. So how, uh, like, like okay. So the thing because is... The baby was having persistent tachycardia, sir. So as vasopressin does not have any inotropic effect, so 
could be different. See, the thing is, Go, go ahead, Mohit. Go ahead. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The preferred inotrope in that baby is vasopressin because it does not have any receptors in myocardium. All other inotropes they do have the receptors there. So that's why to treat shock in babies with my hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the my drug of choice would be vasopressin and fluid bolus. These are the two things we use there. So that's why. In this baby, your vasopressin was a preferred drug as compared to NORAD. This is what I wanted to ask. Okay. So, Sorry, uh, Dr. Vijay. And... Yeah, yeah, no, no, great, great. Okay. I totally agree. So I just want to ask Dr. Sankalp, do you want to ask anything? And Dr. Bujata, it's four minutes past nine. So maybe a couple of minutes we can close. You can close the, uh, you can stop sharing, uh, Shravya. Okay. Sir. Stop sharing. Then uh, if, uh, yeah, so the main purpose for, for discussing uh, this particular baby was, sir, all PDAs need not be closed and sepsis could be the sole reason for that PDA to be um, uh, remain open. So treat the cause for uh, PDA. Uh, so most of the uh, babies, what we get as a referral is this baby has PDA. So it directly comes to pediatric cardiologist for the PDA to be closed. Absolutely. we I received another case this morning only with a similar story. We received quite a few in the last few months <laughs> and less is more. So give some time, treat why it is happening and settle things may settle. So we did not say, we did not say may not need, but we said we'll see. So, and majority of the time, <laughs> as Dr. Bujita said, it will close. And uh, any other comments, Dr. Uh, Sankal? Sir, I agree, totally agree with you. And just to add things, just as all PDS don't need treatment, all PH don't need treatment with the uh, INO. So, we can just wait, give supportive care, proper oxygenation, inotropic support, uh, treat the sepsis, and uh, PH will also settle. Yeah. Many pH will also settle. So I think good case and uh, I think good uh, learnings, I think, for the fellows. Yeah. So uh, final comments from uh, Dr. Uh, Mohi Sahani, boss. <laughs> no, it is uh, very nicely presented and a good case that involves a lot of things. Like there are so many causes, differential causes for shock. Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, sepsis, PDA, PPHN. So everything was in view. So it is, you need to be a, a very clear in your functional echo assessments. And it, very nicely, you have shown that, uh, you know, the confusion is being cleared by ultrasound lung by uh, 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 this thing. Uh, pneumonia has been diagnosed on picked up by uh, ultrasonography. So that, that shows the usefulness of that. And appropriately, you can use the inotropic sport so that your baby you know, responds to that well. Previously, blindly, the dopamine was been started. And in any of these cases, dopamine would have been the most detrimental drug, which you rightly, after your functional assessment, have changed the inotropes. So this is how it helps. So that is a very good example. Nice. Great. Yeah. So I totally agree. And thank you, Dr. Uh... Savia and Dr. Bujata very nicely guiding her and uh, it's a very complex case and uh, nicely explained that the pathophysiology could be together as Dr. Mohit described. So we might not, babies don't re read books and they don't limit to one pathophysiology. So you need to, what I say, my com final comment would be, you need to understand why this baby is in circulatory shock, what the, why it is happening, then you would be able to uh, guide your management appropriately and uh, the clinical as well as the functional echocardiogram recovery at bedside will will make our make us to do the right decisions. So I thank you all our. Uh, um, Vijay sir, uh, we have a question in the chat box. Sir. Sorry, I missed it. All PAH with persistent FIO2 requirement need to be treated with sildenafil. Ah, who wants to take that? Mohit boss, you want to answer? So the thing is. <laughs> So this is something, you know, uh, because after uh, all these things, the sildenafil has been used as a paracetamol in the fever. So that is something we should be very careful about. 
No, all see the first thing is we have to look for whether it this is like there is pneumonia and there is a cause for the FI two requirement. If we with proper ventilation and everything, if we can settle that, then we should be avoiding it. So that's why while doing an echo, the assessment of severity of PPHN is also very important. As it is shown in this patient that there was a significant pulmonary hypertension because predominant shunting was right to left. So that tells me that this thing is affecting my pulmonary pressures. So that's why the sildenafil is needed. But just by on the basis of FI2 requirement, if we are starting sildenafil, then it is not good. There has to be some evidence for it. Absolutely agree. So we have seen babies where sildenafil is started, but no respiratory support was given. Uh, when the baby obviously having respiratory death. So in the era of uh, relatively easy accessibility, echo people diagnose PPHN, but forget why PPHN. So that has, as Dr. Mohit rightly said, you need to optimize the rest of the things so that PPHN may settle on its own or may need uh, some specific pulmonary vasodilators. So uh, shall we stop it there with all your permission, all of you? Yes. Yeah, excellent discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Mohit, Dr. Sankal, Dr. Poojata. Of course, hard work, uh, very nice case, Dr. Shavya. And of course, thank you, ClearNet and also Noel uh, team and NNF. Bye. Good thank night. you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Sir. Thank, you. Thank, you. Sir. thank you. Good night. Sir. Good night. Shreyasi? Yeah. Okay.